What is human conscience? What is a guilty conscience? If a person knows he did something wrong, he feels guilty. His conscience bothers him. Why? Because he did something wrong. He's ashamed, he's, regret, he's regretful, he's, he's afraid of being found out. He's got baggage. The Nazi philosophy said, this conscience is a curse and it comes from the Jews. A healthy human being should have no conscience. You do what you gotta do and you feel good about it. What is this conscience thing? I did something I wanted to do and enjoyed yesterday and now I have a guilty conscience? That's sick. It's crippling. We should not suffer from that. We should not have a guilty conscience. And the Jews polluted the human race with this conscience. So as far as the Nazi philosophy, conscience was limited to the feeling that you get when you're guilty. Imagine if a person is not guilty of anything. Does he not have a conscience? If you're not guilty of anything, are you perfectly content? Or do you still have some nagging voice in the back of your brain saying something is wrong? It turns out that conscience doesn't have to be related to sin or to guilt or to misbehavior. There's something in the human being, no matter how good I am, no matter how beautiful, no matter how innocent, something in the back of my mind keeps asking, is this, is this what I'm here for? Is this what I'm supposed, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I'm doing great. I'm enjoying, I'm completely content with my achievements, my accomplishments and my, but is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this what I'm here for? That's conscience. That's the conscience that God mentioned to Adam when he said, where are you? Adam was covering up. He wasn't dressed properly. He was wearing a fig leaf. So when God called to him, he covered himself behind a bush. And God said, where are you? So God knew where he was. So the Alta Rebbe explains, Chabad thinking explains, God was asking him, where are you in your progress? You've been in the Garden of Eden. You've lived nine hours or 10 hours so far. Well, have, what have you accomplished? in your mission and purpose for which you exist. Did he do something good or did he do something bad when he ate from the tree? Good and bad is an emotional question. There's a bigger question. Did he do what he was created for or did he get distracted and do some other good thing? So the good and the bad and the ugly these are affairs of the heart. Did you do what you were created to do? Your truth? Only the brain is concerned. Only if you're a thinking person does it matter to you whether what you're doing is true or false. So what is false? False doesn't mean dishonest. It's like when we have a false note in a musical composition or in the performance of an orchestra. False note. False note doesn't mean dishonest 
or insincere. It means inappropriate to the, to the purpose. It doesn't follow the rhythm. It's not going where it ought to go. That's a false note. So the godly soul is concerned with what is true and is repulsed by what is false. False meaning, it's not what we're here for. <clears throat> so it's not enough to distinguish between good and bad. That's on the emotional level. On a deeper level, we have to be true to our purpose. Anything else would be a false note. So people, even when they don't feel guilty, still have a conscience. And the conscience is, am I doing the right thing? You have people who, in Hasidic history, who were very successful in business. They gave a lot of charity. They supported every, every good organization and project in town. They were great people. Everybody admired them. And they would come to the Rebbe and say, Rebbe, is, is this what I ought to be doing? Or should I close down the business and sit and study like Tevya? Uh, seven hours every day. What am I supposed to be doing? What I'm doing is good. I have no conscience, no guilty conscience. But my conscience is asking, is this what I am here for? People ask that question and they don't know where to go for an answer. Good and bad, we, we, we have some degree of awareness. We, we know we can distinguish good from bad. Maybe not always, but it's not a mystery. But what I am meant to be, how in the world am I supposed to know that? How do I satisfy that conscience? See, for that you need Chabad. Chabad means understand, think your way to the goal. You can't just ride your emotions. Now, when you have your sights on what is true, that will excite your mind and in turn, turn, stimulate your emotion. The heart will get excited when the mind is excited. And that is the most godly form of emotion, the truest emotions, because there's a consistency. The brain is excited and the heart gets excited about the same thing. It's like putting on tefillin. You put one tefillin on your head and one on your arm facing your heart. The idea is the heart should be excited about the same things the brain is excited about. And that the brain's excitement should be visceral enough to actually stimulate an emotional excitement. Harmony between head and mind, heart and mind. Anyway, getting practical. The reason Chabad has this ambition, has this vision and commitment is because if you're using your mind, then the truth becomes relevant, it becomes important, it becomes urgent, and anything else other than the truth becomes distasteful. So here's the punchline. Godliness is true. 
Truth is godly. Godly means the plan and the purpose for which God created the world. That's the truth behind everything. What is false? False means I got my own problems. I got to take care of myself first. Then I'll worry about God's plan. That's false. Because your own needs are not true. They're not eternal. They're not infinite. So when you turn from the truth, you get a false note. So you can be doing the most beautiful, the most acceptable human type behavior. You're taking good care of your health. You're uh, making a good, a good living, putting aside money for retirement. You're doing everything responsible, everything beautiful. You have a beautiful house. You take good care of it. You take good care of your kids. You send them to a good school. You buy them a new car for their graduation. You're perfect. And none of it is true. None of it is what you were created for. So the Rebbe sends young couples out all over the world. And what is your job? Your job is help people with their conscience, not their guilty conscience, their organic conscience. We need to know why we're here. We need to know the purpose for our existence. That's brain activity, not emotions. And the only place to get an answer to a brain question is in Chabad, which is an intelligent understanding of God's purpose.